uh, we had to uh, bribe my daughter to come up here with uh, Tiffany, which was awesome. Uh, we told her we would give her a piece of candy if she would uh, sit up here. So she is pre-gaming for the fall festival uh, this morning, so that'll be great. She won't go to sleep until about 12 tonight. I'm excited about that. Praise God. Uh, for those of us with families here this morning, it is our fifth Sunday, and what's incredible, and we talked about it a little bit already, man, we are excited that our children get to encounter the presence of God and that our children get to observe and see what it looks like. They get to see you modeling what it looks like to engage in the presence of God. Come on. Like, there, there's nothing greater than that. Like, we're in this stage with my daughter where we are uh, being intentional with our time at home and intentional in the, the things that she watches. And we're intentional about playing worship music, not just on Sunday mornings, but throughout the week at different occasions, at different moments, because we want to model for her what it looks like to, to live within the presence of God. And we've been talking about this series called Blueprint. And I think that's a little bit of what that looks like, is like for us to, to model what it looks like to live within this blueprint. And uh, I was preparing for this morning, and I started thinking about my, my younger brother and I growing up. And uh, for any of our kids in the room, I need you to raise your hand for me. This is class participation, maybe. Uh, any students or children, uh, if you like Legos, can you wave at me? Wave at me. Anybody like Legos? Let's go. So uh, a lot of hand waves. I've got some adults waving at me, which is, I love that even better, actually. That's, that's great. Um, I got Batman waving at me. This is really good. This is off to a very good start. I'm good. I got Batman on my side. I'm safe. And so uh, my younger brother and I, though, we had, when I say hundreds and hundreds, I, I, that's not hyperbole. Like, we had hundreds of Legos. Uh, we had a dresser, um, one of those, like, plastic, you know, whatever, Rubbermaid dressers you get from, like, Walmart, and they had three drawers in them, and we had three drawers slap full of Legos, and then we had some additional bins along with that. But there were times where we would build vehicles and cars and airplanes and trains or whatever I'm missing in that, that phrase, but uh, we would build all these things, and sometimes if we were good, if we behaved well when we were out in public, parents, y'all know how this goes, um, you know, if we behaved well when we were out in public, you know, my mom and dad would sometimes reward us, um, kind of like I'm bribing my daughter, I guess it just, it's generational, it passes down. And uh, we would get rewarded, and we would maybe get like a new Lego set. And that was all cool. We really enjoyed that for a few minutes, because we would build this set, and whether it was a, a building or a house or a structure or a car or a vehicle or whatever it was. And uh, there were times, though, occasionally where we would build this, and then we would create, my young brother and I would create our own little stories. And um, if he's watching this morning, he's going to laugh at this, and he's going to remember this very well. Uh, but I had a tendency to crash everything. Like, my, my, my storyline had the same plot, okay? It was like a Hallmark Christmas movie. You knew what was coming beforehand. Uh, you knew exactly what was going to happen. And my brother would get upset. He's like, you're just going to wreck it. I'm like, you, you bet I am. Like, you know how this goes. And I would take this helicopter. I had this really cool helicopter this one time. I remember specifically, it had like a green windshield. And I remember we were playing this story, and it took me hours to build this thing. And we're like five minutes into our created story, and I'm like, Neek! like, whatever, it blew up. And it broke into, you know, a ton of pieces, and uh, I tried to rebuild it, but you know, as a kid, you don't keep the instructions after the first time, it's just like, it's gone with the wind, you know, it's, it's out of here. And I didn't have the instructions anymore, I didn't have a box, and I'm like, you know what, I can build it from memory, I remember what it looks like, and I'm going through, and I started forming this and crafting this Lego helicopter, I'm like eight years old, and I look like an engineer, I'm like, yeah, this is great. Uh, this is, I, I aspire to be like Austin at eight years old. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to build this helicopter. And I found out, though, uh, as we're going through this, this crafted piece that I tried to establish, um, the propellers wouldn't spin properly because it was missing some of the key components that it needed to work. Right? And I'm going somewhere with this. The, the windshield wasn't aligned properly because it was missing some of like the key pieces it needed uh, to be able to be aligned properly and to open and close. And it, it just wasn't, it wasn't attaching correctly. It wasn't connecting the way that it was like designed to. Why? Because I chose to completely ignore the instructions. I threw those away and I just tried to kind of figure it out. And I'm like, you know what, I can, I can get this done and I'll, I'll make it work. And we're going to look at scripture because we've been in this, for the whole month of October, we've been in this series called Blueprint. And we've been talking about scripture, uh, and we've been talking about maybe what it looks like for us to walk and live our lives in a way uh, that, like, that, that where scripture illustrates and defines kind of what it looks like for us to operate and live within the kingdom of God. 
If we're here this morning and you are a follower of Jesus, then, then we are like residents now. We are citizens of the kingdom of God, right? Amen. We agree with that. And we've been looking at scripture and we've seen these areas in scripture on, on how it, it outlines these different like parameters for these different areas of our lives for what a kingdom resident should look like, what the teachings of God's word, how they, how they define uh, the, the way that our lives should look within the kingdom of God. And we're going to continue to look at that this morning. And it's in Matthew chapter 7, verse 24. If you want to turn to that, you can. In Matthew chapter 7, Verse 24 through 27, this is going to be the key verse that we're going to circle back to. And he says this, this is Jesus speaking at the end of the Sermon on the Mount. He says, everyone then who hears these words of mine and, say this with me, does them, will be like a wise man who built his house on the rock. And it says, and the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat on that house, but it did not fall because it had been founded on the rock. But, in contrast, it says, everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand, and the rain fell, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. I was reading this, and I think what, what really is Jesus is communicating here near the end of the Sermon on the Mount, what he's really trying to, to get across is like this true essence of discipleship. Like he's really trying to communicate this true essence of discipleship, and I think what's interesting is that at the root of discipleship, and if you're taking notes, you can write this down, I think at the root of discipleship is obedience. Like obedience is at the root of this discipleship. As we wrap up this blueprint series together, as we wrap up, here's what I want us to kind of rest in this morning a little bit. It's kind of where I want to, I want to settle for just a few moments as we're, we're communicating this together. That God does have, we've talked about blueprint, we've talked about God's blueprint, we've talked about scripture and some of the ways that it sets these parameters and guides for our lives, how we should be living within the kingdom of God. And these parameters help us uh, to be able to establish and help us live within uh, these like, kingdom principles. It's what we've been talking about in this series with Pastor Justin and Pastor Sean, who they've communicated previously. And we'll continue to talk about it. The, the teaching of God's Word is going gonna, gonna to be the same thing next week. We're going we're gonna to read the Scripture. We're going to read the Word of God. We're going to listen to the teachings of Jesus, and we're going to continue to talk about how you and I can be representatives and ambassadors for the kingdom of God in our lives. Amen. We're going to continue to do that, but we're, we can hold on to this, and this is what I kind of want to lean into this morning, that God does absolutely 100% have this immeasurable love for us. And I even, I even, I even say that word, but like we, actually, we, we can measure it, but not in the way that you and I would think. It, it actually says in Scripture that God demonstrated, He showed His love for us in this, that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. It is measured in the life of Jesus that was sacrificed on the cross. So like we, we can't measure it, we, we, can't really, we can't really grasp that, but it was actually it was measured in the life of, of Jesus but this is, what I, this is what I believe this morning. I, I don't believe that Jesus died just so that you and I could come together and sit in a, a chair and kind of warm a pew chair on a Sunday morning and just maybe feel a little bit good about like our eternity going forward. I, I, I think Jesus' death on the cross was worth more than that. I don't think that was the end result. I don't think that was the desired outcome was for, for Jesus' death on the cross to pay the price so that you and I could just sit in the air conditioning kind of, kind of coast and we could feel a little bit good about our eternity. Like I think that his death on the cross, I think his sacrifice and his blood that was poured out to forgive you and I of our sins and to reunite us into a relationship with God the Father, I think it was worth a lot more than that. It's a little bit of what we're talking about this morning. It's kind of where I want to go with this, that God's plan for Jesus' death on the cross, it was to restore broken and sin-filled humanity back into relationship with God the Father. But I don't think it was, it was meant to end there. But I think then it was for those who have been restored that if you're sitting here this morning and, and you have accepted and you have put your faith in Christ alone and his death on the cross has cleansed us from all wickedness, it says in 1 John 1, 8, 9. 
That if that's you this morning, if you're sitting here with me as brothers and sisters in Jesus, then it's meant then for those who have been restored to then walk out a life within this blueprint, within these parameters, within the guidelines and the teachings of Jesus, for us to walk that out into the world around us, into these little pockets of Gainesville and our city and our town and our state and the world where we get to uh, in, interact with that space. We are meant to then share that same plan of restoration with those who have not yet been restored in the hopes that their hearts would be drawn back to God just like you and I were. Like to help then restore the rest of humanity. Like there is this absolute immense amount of love that God has for us and it was measured only in the death of Jesus on the cross. 100% that's true. Every single one of us in this room, you are designed with God purpose. That you were designed with these unique capabilities and abilities and skill sets and talents and giftings. And he had designed these good things for us. We, we all follow the same blueprint, but he uses us and he gives us these different gifts. And the spirit gives us different gifts to interact in these different spaces. In an accounting firm or in a doctor's office or in a church staff or on a construction site. Like he gives us these different opportunities to communicate, but we're living within the same blueprint. Does that make sense? Say Amen. But I believe that within these parameters that help us, like, like the desire, the mission, was not so that we can accept this gift, this very costly gift of Jesus' death on the cross. It wasn't meant for us just to continue to maybe just sit and warm a chair and feel a little bit good about our eternity. But the mission was to continue to establish the kingdom of God. And we say this all the time, like, God, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Sometimes as Christians, we get this a little bit confused, and I did this for years in my own life, that we think that the prize and the goal and the mark and the target is heaven, and it's actually to continue to establish and build the kingdom of God right here and now in earth as it is in heaven. And so sometimes we respond to this and we read this blueprint and we we think that it's that we can kind of rest i believe that they're within this idea of blueprint i think that there are some like blessings that result from living within this blueprint if you want to take some notes you can i'm just going to read off a couple of them but i think that there are these blessings that rest and are found within the blueprint but listen to me listen to me if you want to take notes you can write this down the fact is none of that matters without this key that living within the blueprint means that we are obedient to the blueprint. Like if we're going to live within the blueprint, it means that we're obedient to the blueprint. We're going to hear that in a handful, a couple of different ways this morning. But look at Luke 11, verse 28. This is what he says. This is Jesus speaking again, just in another place in the Gospels. But he said this. He said, blessed rather are those who hear the word of God and keep it. He, he says this, he says, you are, you are blessed if you hear the word of God. He doesn't just say you are blessed if you heard the word of God in a service sometime on a Sunday this year. You're, he didn't say you're blessed if you heard the word of God in a YouTube teaching. You're, you're not just blessed if you listen to a podcast. It's not just blessed if you maybe, you know, are in a Bible plan on your phone and you maybe listened to the, the scripture this week, but you really can't recall any of it. He says you are blessed if you hear the word of God and keep it. And I'm going to preface this right now. This is ne not necessarily like a fun message to receive as a Christian because there's a lot of challenge within it. I don't like it any more than you do. <laughs> he says, blessed rather are those who keep it. If you hold to what the word of God says, if you read the blueprint, but then follow what it says. Church, if we can be honest with each other really quick, it is really easy for us to come together and gather in a, in a room like this, and we can gather on Sundays, and we can have an incredible experience in worship, which, by the way, we do every Sunday. I'm, I'm a staff member here. This is not a hashtag ad. I'm not sponsored to say this. I genuinely look forward to Sunday mornings. 
Because I know that I'm going to get to gather with a room of brothers and sisters who desire to seek the presence of God. And we have a team and we have, we have, we have people with gifts and talents and abilities and skill sets to lead us into the presence of God. We have a lead pastor who loves the presence of the Holy Spirit and who wants to communicate what the Spirit is speaking to him. For the better of our, our, our congregation, this church, for us as followers in, of Jesus. Like, I genuinely look forward to Sunday mornings. But it is really easy easy for us to walk in here and experience this this gathering and this worship experience this worship moment it's easy for us to enjoy that and experience that it's really easy for you and I to gather in here and sit down and open up the word of God and maybe hear the teaching that pastor Justin or pastor Sean has communicated earlier on in this series it's easy for us to do that but it is tougher for us to hear the word of God it is much more difficult it is much more challenging it requires a lot greater commitment and devotion on our part as disciples to hear the word of God but then receive it and then hear it in here, and then keep it out there. That's a lot more difficult. And I think that's, like the, that's, that's literally like the question Jesus is speaking, and he says it's tougher to do that. But he says it is a blessing for you to hear the word of God, but then keep it. I think the root of what we're hearing here at the end of the Sermon on the Mount is this true discipleship and then responding to, Pastor Sean's going to love this wherever he is in the room, responding to the Lordship of Jesus. Because we want to declare Jesus as Lord and Savior, but we only really claim him as Savior and we never really commit to him as Lord. He's saying it, it, is, it is the response, the discipleship is responding to the lordship of Jesus Christ in our lives with obedience. And I promise you, I didn't write this. These are the words of Jesus. It's in red letters. Uh, I don't, again, enjoy it any more than you do. It's really tough to walk out. It's easier read than done. But I think this, I think there are blessings from living within the blueprint. I think that there are blessings that exist and we experience when we are obedient to the blueprint and the word of God, when we understand that that is the challenge. The challenge is whether or not we are going to choose to respond and act on the word of God and keep it. That is the challenge. John 15, 10 through 11, if you want to check this out with me, it says this. He says again, prepare yourself. He says, if, everybody say if, you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love just as I have kept my father's commandments and I abide in his love love these things i have spoken to you that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be full if you want to take this note you can i think living in the blueprint has this opportunity to bring joy like actual joy um, i remember the first time i heard this communicated that there is a difference between joy and happiness I think happiness is an emotion that is easily swayed and persuaded and manipulated by circumstances and outcomes outside that affect our lives. Like happiness is something that is easily persuaded. Like we can be angry and, or hangry and then uh, go and eat some food and all of a sudden we are, we are happy again. Happiness, I think, is an emotion that is easily persuaded. We, are, we experience happiness when we experience outcomes or results in our lives that we prefer. We experience happiness when we experience outcomes and results and effects in our lives that maybe we hoped for or, or they responded there was a result that we wanted to happen. If I'm being honest with you, I am happy uh, that I'm going to be on a cruise ship in two weeks. I'm, I'm really happy about that. I'm, in, I'm, in, I'm ready for that. But I am not happy. I can tell you right now, it's not, it hasn't happened yet, but I am, this is actually power, uh, power in the tongue, but I, like, I'm not going to be happy when I'm in a two and a half to three hour drive to the port. Traffic does not make me happy. It is this outward circumstance. It's this outward event that affects my life. And it is e my happiness is such an easily manipulated, persuaded emotion. But what we're talking about when we say joy, I think when we live within the blueprint, I think there's this opportunity to experience joy, actual joy, like real joy. I think the joy of the Lord, I think the joy that we have in Christ is a different kind of experience than temporary uh, emotional happiness. 
Happiness is easily manipulated by outside circumstances. We know in scripture that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is consistent and faithful and true. So when our joy is in him, we know that it will not change or waver. There's a difference between joy, and I think it's interesting that that scripture that we just read, that it is in the closing portion of John 15 where he's talking about Jesus' is teaching about being connected to the vine. Because it's in John 15, 5 where Jesus says this. He says, we can do nothing when we are disconnected from the vine. He says we can do nothing apart from him. We can do nothing when we are separated from him. And he closed out this segment by basically saying, he's saying you are connected and you abide in the vine. You abide in him. What did it say? If you keep my commandments. I think obedience, if you want to write this down, you can. I think obedience is like the evidence or the proof of our process of discipleship. I think our obedience is like the evidence of our process of discipleship. Like when we are obedient to the blueprint, when we are obedient to the words and the teachings of Jesus, to the word of God, when we're obedient to that, when we are obedient to the words of Jesus and the way it affects our our finances and our generosity, I think when we respond to the teachings of Jesus and the word of God and the way that it affects our relationships, I think when we respond in obedience to the word of God and the teachings of Jesus, when we respond in obedience to the blueprint that God outlines for the priorities of our lives and the way that we structure our lives and our priorities, I think when we respond to that, I think it is a display of our trust and our commitment to the things of God. It is like the evidence of our following of Jesus as disciples. Psalm 119, 1 through 2, it says this, this, blessed are those whose way is blameless, who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are those who keep his testimonies, who seek him with their whole heart. I think we find joy. There's an opportunity to find joy when we live in the blueprint. I think there's also this. I think living in the blueprint brings peace. It says this in John 14, 27. He says, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. I think when we are living in the blueprint, when we are obedient to the leading of the Holy Spirit and the leading of the Word of God, when we are obedient and we walk in the direction that the Word of God outlines for us, I think we are, as we read a moment ago, we are connected to the vine. We agree with that? Everybody say amen. He says, you are connected, you will abide in my love if you keep my commandments. Like, I think when we walk in obedience, I think we are connected to the vine. When we abide in him, when we abide in the vine, here's what I think happens. And I'm just thinking about this logically. The vine supplies life and substance and nourishment to the branches off of it, correct? It is the stem, it is the root system, it is the source that provides life and nourishment so that the rest of the branches can then grow. I think when you and I abide in him, when we abide in his love, when we abide in Jesus by being obedient and keeping his commandments, living within the blueprint, I think we have an opportunity to experience and benefit from the God of peace think we can find peace when we live within the blueprint i think living in the blueprint also this i think brings unity with jesus this is a really tough scripture to read but bear with me for just a moment because i think we can we can really detail like what jesus's heart is behind it matthew chapter 12 verse 46 through 50 he says this it says while he was still speaking to the people behold his mother and his brothers stood outside asking to speak to him asking to speak to jesus but he replied to the man who told him and he said who is my brother who who is my mother who who are my brothers and he stretched out his hand towards the disciples and he says these are my brothers and my sisters and my mother He says, here are my mother and my brothers, for whoever does the will of my father in heaven is my brother and sister and my mother. He's saying, he's like, those who traveled and those who taught and those who communicated and those who ministered with me, like, these are my brothers. He's saying, those who have done the work of God with me, and he says this, he says, those who do the will of my Father in heaven, those who obey the Father's commands, he says, those are my brothers and sisters. He's saying, those are the ones that I am associated with. Those are my siblings. Those are the ones who are associated with me because they have walked in the will of the Father. They have kept the commands of God. And he says, they're the ones that are abiding with me. They are unified with me. 
Like when we live within the blueprint, we can experience and we can be united with him. I think there are other ways that God displays his faithfulness and his trustworthiness. These three by no means are all-encompassing and the end of the list. I think that there are others within scripture. But none of that matters if we miss this key element. Like, like none of those blessings that we can find within the blueprint, none of that matters if we miss this, and that is this. Living within the blueprint means using it. Living within the blueprint, I think, means using it. Like for us to live, like if, if I abide, like I live in a subdivision in Newberry and I, I'm required to abide by the homeowners association of my subdivision. Does that make sense? Like I'm a resident of this community, I'm a resident of this location, and so therefore I am required to be obedient to the guidelines and the parameters that they set and where I have to put my trash can in my yard or whatever silly things they come out with. But I'm required as a resident of that. I'm, 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 I'm a citizen of this location. I think for us to live inside of the blueprint means that we have to use the blueprint. Brings us back to the words of Jesus that he communicated earlier, and we're going to read this together one more time in chapter 7, verse 24. He says this, he says, Everyone then who hears these words of mine and does them will be like a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain fell, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, but it did not fall because it had been founded on the rock. Conversely, he says, and everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain fell, and the floods came, and the winds blew, it beat against that house, and it fell, and it says, great was the fall of it. church, again, if we can be real and if we can be honest for a moment, I think hearing and even understanding and trying to comprehend the word of God, to really genuinely seek to receive the word of God, just remaining there, I don't think that's sufficient. Like, I don't think that's, I don't think that's the the desired outcome. I don't think that's the, the desired response. The mark is not just to attend a gathering and then maybe hear some of the word of God. I think being a disciple, being a genuine, committed follower who seeks to be close to the, to the heart of Jesus, I think being a disciple elicits more from us. I think it, I think it requires action. Like, I think it requires next steps in, like, our faith journey. It elicits something more from us. Please don't misunderstand this, so I don't want this to be, I don't want this to be mis misconstrued. I am not saying that uh, a response to the gospel necessarily requires action. There is no action other than putting our faith and our hope in Jesus Christ alone. You and I could not do any action to obtain this salvation other than the hope and faith in Jesus Christ. Amen? There's nothing more that we could do to obtain this salvation. The only way that we experience salvation is through the actions of Jesus on the cross. But our response after that should draw something more out of our lives. It, should, it elicits more. It elicits this response. It, it should draw a, a response out of our lives because, listen, to, it should prompt a response to the message and the hope and the, the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross. Hear me on this. I want this to be really, really clear, and you can write this down if you want. Salvation cost Jesus his life, but discipleship will cost us ours. It was only the work of Jesus on the cross that could obtain a hope for our souls of eternity. Like, the only hope we have of spending eternity with God the Father is through the work of Jesus on the cross. But discipleship, discipleship will cost us our life. 
think the Word of God invites us not into idleness, but I think the Word of God invites us into this intentional devotion in response to the hope and the message and the direction and the guidelines in the Word of God. I think it, it, it requires this, this response. Discipleship costs us a full surrender to the lordship and reign of Jesus over our lives. And I think we, we confuse this call to discipleship sometimes. And Jesus addresses this. It's in Matthew 10, 34 through 36. He says this about this idea that our call to follow him is one of peace and comfort because he says this. He says, do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. That sounds really drastic. That sounds really extreme. Just follow me here. He says, don't think that I've come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father and a daughter against her mother and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law and a person's enemies will be those of his own household. Because he says this, he says, whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Whoever does not take his cross and follow me is not worthy worthy of me because whoever finds his life will lose it and whoever loses his life for my sake will find it it's a really really uncomfortable scripture to read if you've never heard it before it's a really really challenging really really difficult piece of scripture to read together and i don't think for a moment that the the design Jesus has for families is to separate mother and daughter and father and son and mother-in-law and daughter-in-law. I don't think for a second that's, that's his design. I don't think that's the heart of the father. But I think what this is intending to convey to you and I, what it's intending to speak to you and I, is just how serious Jesus is about this response to discipleship. Like there's some times where we, we, we don't, man, maybe we just read scripture and we're like, good suggestion I'll consider it I'll pray about it and we think sometimes that like Jesus isn't serious about this response to the word of God and you got to remember he called the first disciples he walked up on the shore and he said hey follow me and they left their 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 fishing boats they left their nets they left their entire careers they left their livelihood you think Jesus isn't serious about our obedience He's saying that here, he's not, his desire isn't to bring a sword, but we think that there's like this comfort and this like ease within like discipleship, but it, it's not. Salvation costs us nothing. It costs the life of Jesus instead of you and me. But discipleship will cost us our life. We hear about these blueprints and we hear about like these guardrails that the word of God offers for our lives and and we do. Sometimes we're like, it's a, it's a good suggestion. It's all right. We'll, we'll consider it. Here's what I think is so significant. This is what stands out to me the most when I read this portion of Matthew 24 and 27. And, and Kelly or Matt, whoever's on the, you can put that on the screen for just a moment. That's scripture in Matthew 7, 24. But it says this, it's, it's referencing two different builders. Just walk with me here as we're closing. Because this is what I want us to hear. It references two different, different builders who are both attempting to establish essentially the same thing. So, so they are building a structure, they are building a, a home, they're building this house, and that house is, is representative of, of everything in our lives. It's representative of this life that we try to establish and, and build for, for ourselves. And they're both trying to build, they're both trying to establish this home or this structure in this house. But they're building it two different ways. They're building it on two different foundations. They're trying to build two of the same structure on two different foundations, but they're doing it in the same circumstances. Watch this. The circumstances do not differ based on the house location or the, or the foundation. Because it was the same rains that fell the same floods rose, the same wind beat and blew against that house, against that structure. Same circumstances, same effects. 
same environment, same atmosphere, same, same weather, same storm. The only difference we see is that one is wise and one, it says, is like a foolish man. We got to understand this, though. When Jesus is describing these two men, he, he is not describing one man as wise and one man as foolish. He is not describing their intellect. He is describing their spiritual state. He is describing and detailing where they stand in their response to the gospel and God. The wise man isn't any better than the foolish man. The wise man, if you notice, he did not get special exemption from the winds or the storm or the floods or the rain. He did not get a free pass. If you're a follower of Jesus in here this morning and you've been following from some time, you and I both know that we get no special exemption from storms or wind or rain or effects or circumstances or difficult situations in our lives. You know that we do not get any pass for that. If you're here this morning and maybe you are newer in your journey with Jesus, I'm going to say this only because I genuinely love you and I care about your walk with Jesus. If you believe that maybe following Jesus or accepting him as Savior made life a little easier, it really doesn't and it probably makes it a little harder because it's really easy to live selfishly. It's easy to live for ourselves. It's easy to make decisions that only affect us. It's easy to make decisions and choices that only do what we want or what we desire. That's easy. It's difficult to choose obedience to someone else's lordship. Check this out. Both of these men in this story are setting out to build a house, and they both experience the same storm and the same circumstances for this construction of these houses. The difference is the wise man chose to use a blueprint, chose to use this Design the very words of Jesus that gives us the opportunity to find joy and peace and, and unity with Jesus. But check this out as we close. As I read this, I kept thinking about how interesting it is that it says at the end of that, it says that one man was like a foolish man who built his house on sand, and it says the rains fell, the flood rose, the wind beat against that structure, and it fell. And it says this, it says great was the fall because of it. And I was reading that. And can we stand together? Can you just go ahead and stand? And can I do this? Can our prayer partners, uh, we've got some incredible uh, individuals who, um, man, seek the face of God, and we have a prayer team. Can you guys just make your way up front and to the sides? Check this out. Just hear me. I think it's so interesting that it says, great was the fall of it. I do not think that it great was the fall because it was a, a greater failure. I don't think it was like Jesus is outlining that, oh man, it was, a, it, was a greater, it was a greater failure. The structure, it was a greater structure that fell. I, I don't think that was the heart of it. I think it says that great was the fall of it because it was a greater tragedy. And listen to me, here was the tragedy. The, the, the result, the reason why it says that it fell and great was the fall because of it, the tragedy is that they were both offered the same blueprint. They, it says both of them, because notice it says both of them heard the word of the Lord, but one man responded and one man did not. And it even goes beyond just the structure and the building of our lives because really what this is alluding to is like coming judgment one day. When every single person in existence will stand before God and we will give an account for our lives, lives on earth. Is that they both heard the word of God, but one chose to use the blueprint. One chose to use and keep the commands of God and one did not. Here's the opportunity we have. And can you bow your head and close your eyes for a moment? We are presented with the same challenge, with the same opportunity, and we can, we can hear the word of God, but there's this choice to be made whether we're going to follow it or not. That's between you and God. That's between you and the Lord. But here's what I would ask this morning, that if you're maybe here today and you say, man, I have never, I have never received Jesus as like the Savior of my life. 
Like I've never prayed, I've never heard the gospel message, I've never heard it detailed that Jesus died on the cross, that I couldn't earn my salvation, I couldn't do enough good things, and it was only because of Jesus' death on the cross that forgave me of my sins. I've, I've, never, I've never prayed with anybody about that. Here's what we want to do is this. We have some individuals up here who would love nothing more this morning than to be able to talk with you about the message of Jesus and to pray with you so that you could surrender your life to him. And all it is is this, we admit that we are sinners, that we have no hope outside of Jesus. We believe that Jesus was the Son of God, that he lived a perfect life, he died on the cross, and then three days later, he rose again, and then we just confess that he is then Lord of our lives. And before I pray, here's what I'm going to ask you to do. If that's that's you in this room, can you come find one of our prayer partners? Just even right now, you can just make your way up front. But for the rest of us in this room, here's what maybe we can do this morning. Maybe we've been reading scripture. Maybe we've been hearing the blueprint. Maybe we've heard Pastor Justin and Pastor Sean previously in this series, and we've heard and we've read some of the scripture that outlines what a kingdom of God resident looks like, but we've maybe been treating it casually. What if we made our way this morning? What if we stepped out and our action and our response was that we were going to come and pray with somebody this morning, that we were going to come into agreement and say, you know what, I want, my, I want my children to see me model out what it looks like to respond to the Word of God. I want my family to see what it looks like for me to model out response to the Word of God. I want my, I want my children and my family to see what it looks like for me to become obedient and confident in following Jesus' words. And we invite you this morning. God, I pray right now for every single individual in this room that we would not just hear your words, not just hear your teachings, but we would be obedient to them. Because we just sang earlier that we can build my life on you, that we can build this structure, that we can build this foundation on something that is firm and faithful and trustworthy and true and never fades, never wavers. And that even when the rains fall, even when the floods rise, even when the winds blow, we still know that it will remain because our foundation and our house was built on you and not on something temporary. God, I thank you for the families this morning. I thank you for the individuals. I thank you for the hearts, God, that you have been communicating to through your Holy Spirit this morning. I pray, God, that we would leave this place looking more like the image of Jesus, that we would have a greater commitment, a greater desire, a greater understanding of what it means to be a disciple in the world around us. We pray that you would continue to lead us and guide us. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Can you guys say amen? Can we give it up for Jesus one time who is worthy of it all?